Trixie and this evening I'm going to be presenting about how we are able to create accurate flood models through GIS. So this is a topic that is near and dear to me because um, I am part of the flood modeling component of the UP NOAA Center and the UPRI. So talk about it. Yun. So ayan po. So and so una una muna um, a lot of people probably know this lecture already. I don't know. Kasi, um, whenever people talk, um, whenever people ask me to talk about what I do, which is flood modeling, this is like the most basic way of explaining. So, sa mga nakakita na nito, kahit na kayo, ayan. So, flood modeling. What exactly do we do when we talk about flood modeling? So, basically, it's just two things. Flood modeling, di ba? So, first, let's start with the flood. When we do flood modeling, there are two things that we want to know. First, we want to know where the where is the flood going to go? Anong areas ang maapektuhan ng mga bahang ito when they happen? And next is, how much flood is there going to be? Is it going to be knee deep? Is it going to be neck deep? Because of course, um, ang flood na mababa lang has a very different effect kung yung flood mo ay lagpas na o na or lagpas na ng bahay mo. So from the fact na we want to know where the flood is going to go, obviously you can see that the information that we're talking about here is very geographic and it's very spatial, very location based. Gusto kasi natin malaman kung saan, saan siya pupunta. So how do we know, how do we find out where the flood is going to go? So dito papasok yung konsepto ng watersheds and river basins which are a very integral part of flood modeling. Um, so as you can see here, um, over on the right, ito yung mga catchments and sub-basins that make up Metro Manila. So, ayan, thank you. Yung Tulian River Floodway, San Juan River, Pasig, pa, pa, Pasay, Paranaque, Las Piñas, Marikina, Tulian, Marilao, etc. So the concept of river basins and watersheds are very important um, when it comes to flood modeling. So, Ayan. So, when using um, GIS, um, the GIS is a very important tool because it helps us to delineate the watersheds that we use for modeling. So, bale, when you do the flood modeling, we talk, we look at a watershed or river basin as an independent system. It's something that we have to look at as a whole so that we will be able to come up with accurate flood models. When you have a, when you have a river basin, it's impossible to model it without considering the entire thing. So, kailangan, um, the boundaries of the river basin are well delineated. So, one of the superpowers of our GIS is that it helps us to be able to do just that. So, from here, from um, elevation data such as this IFSAR digital elevation model of Metro Manila, um, we are able to come up with the uh, yeah, catchment areas or yung delineations based on the ridge part. So usually kasi po, ang river basins, watersheds are um, bound by yung matataas na areas. So kasi nga river basin siya, para siyang langgana, which is yung sa paligid niya, those are the areas that are um, the areas with high elevation. So using GIS, you're able to come up with that. So those white lines, as you can see, are the watershed boundaries. So we use that when we do flood modeling. And from that, we, all, we are also able to find out or get the streams. Yan naman ang streams. So um, when we say streams, we usually um, talk, uh, think of mga ilog, yung mga creeks and such. Actually, when it comes to flood modeling, streams are not um, always rivers or ilog or perennial creeks or whatever. Streams are topo topographic lows, as we would like to call them, na ang tendency kapag umuulan, bumabaha, doon pumupunta yung tubig. So this is another important aspect of flood modeling. That is integral in creating accurate flood models. So it's important that we know where these streams are. So yun, so yung ginagawa ni JS, it helps us find out from the elevation, what the catchment areas are and where the streams are supposed to be. So, yun, dito natin. Next, how much flood is there going to be? So, aside from knowing kung saan pupunta, kailangan we also know how much water we are going to have to expect. 
So from the lecture of Ms. Dang kanina, she talked about probabilistic um, hazard models. So the same thing um, that they do with volcanic hazards, we also do with flood. So here, we use data from Pag-asa. So it might surprise some to know that rain, rain data is also spatial. It also varies from area to area. Ibig sabihin, ang ulan sa buong Pilipinas iba-iba yan. Hindi pare-pareho. May mga areas na madaming ulan, may areas na konti. So this is something that we also have to take into consideration when we do our flood modeling. So for example, when we create an, a flood modeling for a specific area, for example, Metro Manila, we cannot use the rain for maybe Mindanao or, or Visayas because it's going to be different. So this image is a map of the uh, pieces and polygons of the RIDF stations all over the Philippines. So RIDF is Rain Intensity Duration Frequency. Yeah. So basically, ano lang po yan, um, rain gauges ni Pag-asa from all over the Philippines. Yung mga red dots na yon are the stations. And the polygons, which we derive from, our, uh, from GIS, is ano, um, is the area that or the the, the correlated the area connected to that piece and polygon. So when we model our um, specific catchments or areas, we take this into consideration to make sure na kapag we model namin yung area, the rain that we get or the rain that we use for the model is also accurate and near um, near the actual values of rain that you can get from there. Oxpa. Sige. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. So, tapos na tayo sa flood. Doon na tayo sa model part. Ano ba yung modeling? Okay. Ano ba yung modeling? A model is a physical representation that shows what something looks like or how it works. So, when we say something like um, a model train, a model house, a model car, it's a representation of something real, pero you make it you try to make it as accurate as possible. And that is exactly what we do with our flood models. To make it accurate, we want to make it as near to the actual conditions as possible. So how do we do that? We use, um, for our, our flood models, we try to get in as much information as we can, especially th those that alam namin really affects um, the flood, uh, the, the flooding in an area. So here, yeah, so balik tayo din sa DEM kanina because elevation is actually a very important factor pag flood modeling kasi alam natin that water goes from lugar na mataas pupunta siya sa mababa. Okay, so using um, information which we also derive from GIS, aside from elevation, the other information that we take into consideration here are land cover, soil type, um, curve number, which is... Um, based on the infiltration parameters of soil also, and rain. So all these factors go into creating a model that is, we try to make it as close to the actual conditions as possible. This way, we, we ensure that when we do the model, we come up with values na talagang most likely yun ang mangyayari. Okay. So even the, the whole process of the, the modeling, we rely a lot on GIS to make sure that the models are accurate. But a step further from that is we also use GIS in the analysis and in the application of the results that we have. For example, here, we are, um, we are in integrating the high-resolution flood hazard maps, which we were able to make to integrate them to flood disaster management. So this is in Marikina City. Ayan, yan ang boundary nila. And then we model the area, which is, ayan, yung itsura po ng flood hazard map nila, 100-year rain return flood hazard map. From GIS, we are able to tell that ito, yung mga specific areas, or yung, sa hospitals, we are able to tell which are high hazard, medium hazard, and safe areas. So this is something that is very important to know when you are in an emergency situation such as a flood. So, ayan. Also, evacuation centers, which are mostly, usually used, um, yung elementary, yung schools are used as evacuation centers. So it's important to know which ones are safe, which ones are not. So maraming beses na, well, 
may mga beses na nangyayari na people go to evacuation centers and then um, they, it turns out, they're, they're not safe there. So this is something that is very important for us to know. And then, ayan, ito, um, we try to find a route that is safest to take to go to the evacuation center. Siyempre, if you want to be safe, you go from an area of high hazard to a low hazard. So using this um, road data in GIS, we are able to determine what way to, which way to go in the event of a flood. Konti na lang, meron pa, ayan siya. Ito naman. Um, usually in hazard events, we talk about um, extreme rain events, 100 rain return, 50 year, 25 year, but also we have to remember that flooding doesn't always occur kapag super typhoon, bagyo, or whatever. Um, tandaan na, yung nangyayari lagi sa atin ngayon, floods happen in, um, flash floods happen, umulan lang ng konti, babaha ng konti, magta-traffic, gridlock na yung entire city. So, that is also something important na kailangan din natin um, to bring attention to. It's not only the big storm events that cause damage, that cause cost to us. So, here, um, using flood modeling and GIS, we try to predict urban flooding for short-term rainfall scenarios. So, here is, um, actually, every year, MMDA releases a list of flood-prone areas, flood-prone streets, to maybe, I guess, as a warning, I guess, to watch out for na, oy, kapag umulan, wag lang kayo dumaan dyan, traffic dyan. So, ito, yung list nila, over on the left, and then validated with crowdsourced data through I think Twitter and other parts of the internet. We um, intersected that with the models that we have for um, for the floods. And actually, if you look closely, you can see that most, if not all, of the areas are actually intersections of um, roads and streams. So kaya bumabaha dyan kasi stream yan. Which, balik tayo dun sa konsepto ng stream that I said earlier, it doesn't have to be a perennial stream. Hindi kailangan may makita kayong tubig dyan every day of the year for it to be called a stream. It can be just a topographic low that catches the water when it rains. So we, uh, it, so nagminata namin yung specific areas na yon with one hour of rainfall at different um, amounts. So from 30 to 60, 70, yeah. So as you can see, yung ibang areas na flood prone, some samples of the roads are Bayani Road, Victory Avenue, Arpapa, and sa SM North. Ayan. So those are in the areas. And you can see that according to the model, even just one hour of rain, 30 mm to 70 mm, is enough to create that much um, flood already. So aabot na yan ng knee deep na ganong karami flood. And we all know na does it need to be high floods for it for us to offer it to cause extreme traffic and, you know, kung ano-ano pang ibang problema. Ayan. So, from this, using GIS, again, we, are able to, we were able to create an analysis of the roads and the road sites. This is just to show na ang nangyari when making these roads, when making these roads, ayan, balik tayo dun sa intersection pala siya of creeks and streams. And when they made the roads, instead of making allowances for the for the dip in the topography, what they did was to follow it. So even if kapag walang ulan ay wala namang tubig dyan, in the event of a rain, magkakaroon din. So yung scenario sa A, magsuswimming yung kotse. So dapat B tayo, dun tayo sa B. Ayan, sample. Dito sa, ati, dito sa UP mismo, yung taas ay A roses. So, may creek dyan. Makikita po natin na medyo malalim-lalim yung, um, yung creek dyan. But it never floods because they raised the road to accommodate this, the creek. So, ayun po yung tsura nun. Nandun ako pero hindi ako kita eh. So, yun sa baba naman si P. Garcia. So, dun sa lower left image, makikita nyo na pababa talaga siya. And the road was made to follow the topography. And since my stream and creek dyan, nagbabaha siya lagi. Ayan lang po. Thanks so much.